Hi, and welcome to lesson four, our final lesson here in our matter and energy unit. And again, cheeseburgers. Because I like cheeseburgers a lot, and because cheeseburgers have a lot of calories of energy stored in them. If you remember back a couple of lessons, we introduced this notion of calorimetry, or measuring the amount of energy stored in a substance. And that, of course, is the process by which all of the energy values for all of the food that we eat is, in fact, determined, including these cheeseburgers. Let's take a moment and go back and remember what a calorimeter is. It's simply a device for measuring the amount of energy stored in a substance. And that substance does not have to be food. There are a lot of different kinds of calorimeters that we can create. This is a very simple calorimeter, which just uses a couple of styrofoam cups and some water and a thermometer. This is a much fancier calorimeter, which is called a bomb calorimeter, which gives much more precise and accurate values for the energy content of the substances that are reacted inside of it. The way a calorimeter works is pretty simple. The potential energy in a substance is converted into kinetic energy, usually by burning the substance. The kinetic energy that's released is then going to be absorbed by an insulating substance, which is often water, though it doesn't have to be. And then the temperature change in the insulator is measured. And by measuring the temperature change and doing a bit of math, we can figure out how much energy was initially stored in our substance. We'd introduced reference table I in our last discussion. It's important to understand that all of the values listed on reference table I were determined through the process of calorimetry. In order to determine these accepted values, both in reference table I and in the food that we consume, many, many experiments are done many, many times, and the results from all of those are averaged together. In order to be able to figure out the amount of energy stored in a substance through calorimetry, you need to use the calorimetry equation. This is an equation that's going to mathematically relate the heat content of a substance, the math of that substance, and the temperature change for that substance. This is, of course, given to you on reference table T. Of course, we can also rearrange this equation to solve for any one variable. So Q, or heat, is equal to mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. In the same way, the mass is going to be equal to the heat divided by the specific heat times the change in temperature. And the specific heat is going to be equal to the heat divided by the mass times the change in temperature. And the change in temperature is going to be equal to the heat divided by the mass times the specific heat. Specific heat is a new thing for us. It's the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree Celsius or one degree Kelvin. The specific heat of water is given to us on reference table B. It's defined as 4.18 joules per gram per degree Kelvin. This means that 4.18 joules of energy can be absorbed by one gram of water in order to raise its temperature by one degree Kelvin or one degree Celsius. Water, it should be pointed out, has an incredibly high specific heat. For reference, here's the specific heat of iron. You can see that it is almost 10 times less than the specific heat of water, for reasons that we'll talk about when we start to talk about how substances are arranged at the atomic level. You should understand that for any problem involving a temperature change of water, that you are not going to be given the specific heat value because it is provided to you on reference table B. Let's do an example of a calorimetry problem and see how this all works. This is from page nine of our unit two packet. The question is, how many joules of energy are absorbed by 100.0 grams of water if the temperature is increased from 35.0 degrees Celsius to 50.0 degrees Celsius? We're going to use the calorimetry equation, Q equals MC delta T. We are looking, in this case, for our Q value or our amount of heat. That means that we should have been given everything else that we need in order to solve this problem. The mass is given to us in the problem. It's 100.0 grams of water. The specific heat of water is on reference table B, so we know that it's 4.18 joules per gram degree Kelvin or degree Celsius. That doesn't matter. And finally, delta T we can figure out by taking our final temperature and subtracting our initial temperature from it. So 50.0 degrees Celsius minus 35.0 degrees Celsius. That winds up looking like this. And when we do the math, our answer is going to wind up being 6,270 joules with three significant figures in our answer. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment, write down any questions that you have, and then let's move on and look at a more advanced problem. This problem is from page 10 in your packet. 200 joules of energy is absorbed by an 80.0 gram sample of water in a calorimeter at 25.000 degrees Celsius. What will the final temperature be? 
Take a moment and do this on your own, or at least try to, and pay attention to where you get stuck or any questions that you have. And then when you're ready, play the video through and let's go through the solution. So this is actually going to be a two-step problem. In our first step, we're going to solve for delta t. To do that, we're going to rearrange the calorimetry equation and divide Q, or the heat content, by the mass times the specific heat. Of course, we are dealing with water, so it's going to look like this. When we do that, we wind up with a change in temperature equal to 0 0.598 degrees Celsius. But we're not done, because the question is asking us what the final temperature of the water will be. All we know right now is the change in temperature. In order to figure out the final temperature, we're going to need to take our initial temperature of 25.000 degrees Celsius and add our change in temperature to it. An obvious question here would be, why do we add and not subtract? It's actually in the problem. We know that the water is absorbing the energy from this process. As a result, we know that its temperature is going to increase above whatever its initial temperature was. Using that, we can plug in our values and solve for a final temperature of 25.598 degrees Celsius. This is about as difficult as a problem will get in calorimetry world. And so if you got it, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and we're going to practice this quite a few times so that we're all more comfortable with it going forward. Make sure that you can do the following here at the end of this video. Make sure that you can explain how a calorimeter works using a simple calorimeter, like a couple of styrofoam cups, some water, and a thermometer. Make sure that you can explain the concept of specific heat and why it's useful. Finally, make sure that you can use the calorimetry equation to solve for every variable in the equation if you're given every other variable in those problems. If you can do each of these things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always get in touch with me by leaving a comment below the video or through the contact information in the info field for the video. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Take it easy.